Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna sanitize my hands with some Alpet. Um, you're probably all familiar with Alpet. So you wanna go ahead and you wanna spray a little bit in there because I know when you're out there in the processing facility, it is, it's hot, it's hard to change your gloves. Um, some people do actually put on gloves because the Alpet can, it's kind of rough on your hands um, and they just sanitize the same pair of gloves. Anyway, so I'll just show you um, the sponge stick. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you label your sponges <laughs> according to where and what you're swapping. Very important. Um, you do not want to mix up a zone two with a zone one. That's very important. So you're going to be doing pathogen swabs typically from a two to a four um, zone. On the zone ones, typically it's indicator organisms and you do not want to get these text up. Um, so with this, you can see that there is actually a stick in here. So you want to push it up to the surface. So here, you can see that um, below the, the perforated line right here or the mark, it will be sterile. You do not want to be putting anything in here except for your sponge. So I'm going to go ahead and tear it off. It has little red ears that you can grab a little tab and you pull it out. And so the end of the stick is actually out. So you do not put your hands inside of the bag. Um, so you want to go ahead and grab it. So you want to utilize the entire surface of your sponge. Um, best practice for swabbing is you want to put a little bit of pressure on and you want to go back and forth, no, no more than, depending on the surface or the sample size that you're trying to do, no, no more than like a foot um, squared, uh, but you definitely can do more. Um, and you wanna go ahead and rotate your swab. So I'm gonna do that again. So you're gonna put the surface of the swab to the surface that you, you are um, sampling. You're gonna push down a little bit and you're gonna go back and forth very comprehensively and then you're going to flip it 90 degrees you're going to flip your sponge over and then you will sample back across the what you just sampled so this means that you should be getting a comprehensive sample of the area um, so now what you want to do is you want to grab the bottom of the sponge and this should come off you need to go back and forth a couple of times and then it will snap off this is what you discard and then here is your swab right here. So this is what you'll send to the lab. You roll down the little, um, roll down the bag and use its ears to close it. And then now you're good to go. Labeled and you put it in your cooler and away it goes to the lab. Okay, so this one is a little bit more difficult. I would say this is a little bit more time consuming for, for some. Um, so the gloves actually come with the sponge itself. So it's, it's a little bit harder to, you don't want to try and touch here because this is what's going to be contacting your swab. So this is difficult if you're doing this by yourself. If you have two people swabbing, it would be easier to do it. So um, you want to try and tear this off before putting your glove on, but you need to try and, it's, it's quite hard. So my glove is not touching anything right here, but you need to be very wary of that. Um, so a lot of the times people don't really use these, but these are definitely an option. So you wanna go ahead and put your glove, glove on that is sterile. You reach into the bag and you pull it out. So, um, it's the same idea. Now your hand is the stick. <laughs> uh, so you wanna go ahead and you wanna push it to the surface, same premise, flip it over, and then go back and forth back over the area. And then put it into your bag. You want to take the glove off, and then now you can um, roll it down and close it with the little ears. And so then now this is your glove. So error for possible contamination is more so with this type of swab. <laughs> um, I think this is the original swab that 3M actually did come out with, but uh, these ones are quite popular. As you can tell, 
you don't need to um, use gloves, be worry about where it is and stuff like that. So, th so these ones are, are very good. Um, so for smaller areas, we actually have uh, Q-tips. So they look like your household Q-tip that you use. Um, and so what you wanna do with these, it's very important that you rotate this across the surface while swabbing, okay? So you want to either do a 45 degree or a 90 degree angle, um, and you wanna rotate and try and cover probably an inch by an inch, and then you wanna rotate it, like go backwards, back across what you've done. And you gotta um, rotate your swab to make sure that you are covering everything, the entire surface of the Q-tip. And go ahead and you put it back in here. And so then you would send this to the lab. Um, so this is what you can use for the smaller areas, um, maybe uh, holes in, in frames, uh, on the conveyor belt, sometimes in, in the cracks of your control panels, you can try and use, use these. Um, most of the time, I feel like these are pretty good. They, they, they kind of cover everything. Um, so what you'll notice is that there's actually liquid in, in all of them. So this is a lithium bra, and this is a neutralizing bra that's purple. Some of them are clear like this, and some of them are purple. Um, so the premise of this is like, so what you're doing is you're gonna be swabbing your surface after you clean. So the purpose of having this liquid in these in the samplers is uh, to neutralize your cleaning um, sanitation that you've just used, your, your solutions. So for instance, you know, you've, you've cleaned your frame and, and your conveyor belt, stuff like this, the floor, you know, you've broken everything down, you put everything back together. Um, and typically the sanitation crew will probably use the sanitizer at the end, alcohol base, typically, depends on what your sanitation uh, program is. So uh, once the surface is dry, you have to swab when it's dry. You cannot swab when it's wet. You shouldn't. I should say you can, but you shouldn't. Um, it's just because you will probably kill what is there because you are testing literally your chemical, um, not for the organism. So uh, yeah, so Alpet, I have Alpet here. So after you swab, you wanna make sure that you actually sanitize the area that you just swapped. So what we did is we used a neutralizing buffer on the area. So this potentially, let's say this is a conveyor belt and this goes to, and you don't clean this, this could potentially grow a pathogen or an indicator organism that you were looking for. Let's say, you know, if it's uh, anterior, um, anterior bacteriaceae and now you don't know, now this conveyor belt is going through and being used on your product. Um, but you wanna make sure that you cover it and you wanna clean it and wipe it down. You don't want the residue to be touching anything um, on your product at all. Uh, so I guess, does anyone have any questions about sampling um, and Technique or something like that. So we've got a question here. Can you use the sponge swabs for APC or coliforms if you use a different broth? Yes. So the broth is just to make the organism nice and happy. Um, so it's, it's a neutralizing broth. Um, so the APC and the coliforms, so indicator organisms that um, John has mentioned, you can do out of the same swab. Um, for pathogens, though, for like your salmonella and your listeria, you would, you would need a separate swab. Um, so if you're doing a listeria salmonella site and you're doing uh, on the same site, uh, you, would, you would need two of these. Um, but yes, it does it. Regardless of the, of the broth, um, yes, it doesn't, doesn't matter. It's just the number of swabs that you send in. Thank you.